the heck's everybody doing this morning? Look at this. Right in front of the truck. See that? Water puddles. We've got more water puddles this time than the last time I showed you guys a water puddle. Eh, darn truck. Um, so last night, as we were coming home, well, even on the roof of our son's house, I had made the comment that uh, it was getting awfully black. There was a storm brewing. And yeah, so there's the rain gauge. Now if I zoom in on it, maybe from the truck. If you guys can make that out. Yeah, there's there's some rain in there. Anyways, we ended up We ended up with seven tenths last night. It started raining here about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So over the course of about an hour and a half-ish till about midnight. So it was very welcomed rain, let me tell you. And I don't know if it was exactly seven tenths or if we got a little bit more than seven tenths because there was quite a wind behind it. It was blowing it sideways. But we definitely got some rain, right? And so that's that rain is that seven tenths is definitely gonna green make things green up like this old pasture right here of ours. He's gonna start to green up really nice again here now. And maybe that gamble crop, this cover crop of ours will grow a little more which will be nice and maybe the oats and the barley will uh, the heads will fill out a little better but anyways there's the neighbors cows um, yeah we got some freaking rain some guys they got a lot more than just rain like my old stomping grounds across southern Saskatchewan from Mancota all the way Ben Goff Big Beaver Cornac, Willabunch, Wood Mountain, uh, I'm assuming parts of Rockland. I haven't heard from anybody from the Rockland area yet. They all had hail to the point of hail that was the size of golf balls and bigger. Bigger than a golf ball. Well, that's a pretty darn good sized hailstone. And then up in the Wishart area, they had some light hail, but you go a little bit further north half hour 40 minutes north of Wishart to uh, Wadena they were completely hailed right out uh, Silton crops that looked like this right here two days ago are completely gone they got hailed out too and so like it was all over the place but anyways we had a phone call here, email this morning from FWS, another light little load, uh, Regina to Saudi, which is only like 50K, 48 kilometers, I think, to be exact. Uh, we got to run into Regina, pick up, if I remember correctly, it was three lengths of four by four angle iron and get it out to a job site at Saudi, so. That's where we're going right now, guys. We'll get this job done right away here, and maybe, who knows, by the time I get back, we might just hook up to the big old goosey and start hauling some bales home. So, anyway, we'll bring you along for the ride a little bit, and we'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty, guys, well, we've been up to Southie, and we're heading back here now. Just cutting across, taking a bit of a shortcut to get home on this uh, what they call Zener grid which is actually correction line which takes me right basically almost right to my place outside of a two mile jog mm, so anyway uh, the crops don't look too too bad in on average but some of them like this one right here he don't look too good They didn't get the hail out here at uh, 
that some other places got. Uh, just got notification from my brother. His place got hailstones the size of golf balls pretty bad. Uh, he's got a hail, he's hailed out basically. Their neighbors are telling him it's 100% gone. So, so that kind of sucks. But then again, I don't know. What do you do, right? Uh, so, but we got some other shit that we got to deal with here right away when we get home. So, I'll let you guys know what that is when I get there. We'll talk to you in a bit. Alrighty, guys. Well, we're uh, obviously back home. And we got over to the neighbor's place where we're renting pasture from. And the problem is... Our bull was missing. He hadn't seen him for two days. I saw the bull on Friday, and he seemed to be okay. Uh, I didn't see anything wrong with him. And then we come over here, and we're hunting for the bull, and we found him pretty goddamn quick, actually. CP and I found him right away. He was just laying down in the bush. But the problem is his, he's got a swollen pecker. Now I believe what the problem is is that walking through the bush and rose bush and everything else, if he let her hang out, then uh, uh, he would have could have scratched his sheath or something like that and got a bad infection from it. And it only takes a couple days for it to swell right up and get really nasty. So it's putting pressure on his bladder and that's really swollen bad. Uh, yeah, it's not looking good. And we are moving the cows tomorrow and they'll be going into a corral. So we're going to work at getting his ass home here tomorrow. Because the landowner isn't quite set up for uh, moving the cows today just yet. So we're going to work at moving the cows across into a better water source and newer pasture. Um, and then the bull will be with them. And we'll get him in the crowd, load him up, take him home, and also bring a, bring a different bull out here. So that's the plan. Yeah, just what we need. Another friggin' job to do, right? Not, but... It is what it is. We can't sell him right now because he's so swollen. I won't get a dime for him. So we're going to let him... Basically, we got to treat him. And hit this hard and hit it fast. And uh, go from there. But yeah. Nobody wants to have an injured bull. Especially at uh, breeding time. <coughs> but luckily for us, we do have a couple at home that uh, act as backup and cleanup bulls. So, And that's the whole purpose of having those guys. Anyway, I'll let you all go and we'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty, so this thing is ready to go to Weyburn now. Uh, with the storm that w they had... That everybody had in the south country last night strong winds some areas got lots of hail other areas got no hail and no rain we got rain but uh, the son-in-law daughter and son-in-law they got a bunch of hay that was laying on the ground and that wind blew the swath all over the friggin place so I uh, told him he could use this um, to rake those swaths back up so that it could get baled, but I'm going to need it back here for Thursday, I figure, to do some baling that we cut on that custom crop. So I got the bar transport safety bar in place right here, this bar right here. It's in the top position right here, which means that's the safety position. Um, when he goes to put it in field position, he has to drop it all the way down to here. You just unpin this, take this bar, move it to there. That's all you got to do. And then with this particular machine, you can actually flip one swath at a time. So you take this bar, 
and instead of having it down there you put it in here and uh that'll hold the one wing up and the other the other wing will drop to the ground so you can flip one at a time or you can do two at a time how's that sound our case with us we go two at a time so all he has to do is come hook up and go i gotta get a tarp strap on the hoses anyway there's lots going on today hauled a little bit of steel dealt with a freaking bull and we'll still have to deal with the bull but at least we found him and we know where he is got this thing ready to go the bucket is back on the front end of little red and it sounds like we might be going back to the city today to either well have supper with my brother who is up him and his wife um or we'll end up at our son's place to uh help him with let's see here what do i want this one to help him with uh shingling the other half of his garage or we might do both how's that sound anyway talk to y'all later just moving cows on a hot day got my pail of grain and got them all following me Tristan's back there somewhere bringing up the tail and we're looking for a bull because he's injured and he doesn't want to come out of the bush fun 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 let's get her done go see some girls boy there you go Hurry up before the gate closes. There you go. So all of these cows have been exposed to the other bull, but he's injured and we can't get him out of the bush. And we just moved him into this other pasture. So we brought the other bull out. And he'll investigate them and he'll pick up on what the other guy never got. But I'm pretty sure there might be a couple that aren't bred yet, but I'm pretty sure the other guy got all of these girls at least once already. But I could be wrong because he's really sniffing and checking. And in here there is a fairly decent dugout just inside those trees over there. I gotta deal with this gate. Alrighty, we'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty, so here we are. We're on our way home from uh, the rented pasture. And yeah, so our black brockle face bull, he's the one and I don't know if I said this earlier or not, but he's injured. Uh, what it is, is he scratched, he scratched his penis, either walking through the bush or something like that. He's got a bad infection. Um, right now he is hurting a little bit and he's a little pissed off about it. And in the little pasture that he's in, what they call their bush pasture, it's like bush bluff, 10 yards, bush bluff, 10 yards, bush bluff. And some of the bluffs are fairly large. And we just can't get him out of there to get him to come over. He doesn't want to go with the cows. We figured, well, we'll get him out of there and get him over and be with the cows. Because where the cows are right now, there's a crowl set up and the whole bit right there, right? But there's just no way with them on horseback because you're going through friggin bush that we can barely walk through on foot so I don't know what the hell we're gonna do there's only one water source and it is fenced off to so that they can separate the cows from 
the bush bluff pasture into a different pasture into it three ways basically okay so we're just gonna close off all the gates except one and we'll open it tonight when he comes in for water we'll lock him in there we'll take our crowd panel set them up in there and hopefully we'll catch him in there so we can get him caught in the crowd panels get him loaded and uh, yeah get them home so we can do something with them right anyway that's the plan and that's what's going on guys so with all that we'll catch y'all later and uh we'll see what happens talk to you well holy crap guys we're over here on uh some rented land first time i've ever cut this but this is the third year for it and uh wowzers she's a She's a heavy puppy, let me tell you. It's water runs that I cut and bail lots of the sloughs on this one neighbor's place, but him and his son have been cutting these water runs, and this year they said, now nah, go ahead and you can have them, Brandon. So uh, first time on here for us, and yeah, it really, uh, seeding these water runs down like this, it really paid off. and. Luckily, his other renter, who's got all the canola out here, didn't actually spray it all out. How's that sound? So we're definitely going to get some bales here, but it's going to take a while for this stuff to, to dry down because it's in a low spot where the wind can't get to real good. And on top of that, we got all this canola on either side to help shade it also. So she's going to be a bugger getting this stuff to dry, but... Oh, uh, we'll get her. Here comes CP, so I gotta get going. We'll talk to y'all later. Have a good one. Adios. Alrighty, guys, so we're out of that water run with the big, heavy alfalfa in it, and now we're into this one, and it's just light grass. Uh, it was a seeded water run, but there's pretty much nothing left here now. Just this light grass, but We'll cut her down, we'll rake her up, we'll bale it up, we'll get whatever we get, right? I think last year I had five bales out of this water run. It's not very wide, it's not very long, but when you're getting the heavy alfalfa ones, I guess it evens out. How's that sound? Just, uh, we were stopped for a little bit because CP's machine, she broke sickle. So, in that end of the water run further down, that's all done. So we don't have to worry about that. Work this hydra swing around the tractor, so to speak. And the guys that are farming this land, you've heard me talk about them before, it's Cambite, Cambite Farms. Their canola looks pretty good right now, that's for sure. They're lucky buggers, but they never got no hail. Not like some guys. Lots of guys actually in the province got heavy, ugly, ugly hail. Like when you got golf ball size hailstones, that's taken out a lot of product in a short time. Now the canola might come back for some guys that got hail. I don't know. It might not. Depends on how bad it got hammered and for how long, I suppose. But their wheat crops, their barley crops, their oat crops, hell, their hay crops, if it wasn't cut and baled yet, that stuff is done. And lots of guys I saw, they got the hail, but they didn't get no rain. They just got hail. Like, that's a son of a bitch, eh? You don't get no rain, you just get hail. But anyway, we're going to finish this off and we'll talk to y'all later. Alrighty. So we just took our yearling that we just bought this year and put him out here with Sheriff and these girls at home. And so... And they're going to have to get used to each other. That's him right there, the yearling. Sheriff's on the other side of him. So. Uh, 
And these girls are looking pretty good. Calves are coming along nicely, that's for sure. Even the fresh calves that were just born recently, there's one back there, another one further back. And so, anyway, I'm gonna let y'all go. Give us the old thumbs up, you know this. Comment, subscribe, to all your friends and neighbors. And fun, fun, fun. When you got cows, you're having fun. Talk to y'all later. Really? <laughs> <laughs>